If you've opened your QuickBooks Online recently to do your monthly bookkeeping and you've noticed that the bank feed code your all of your transactions looks really different than it used to, you might have gotten a little scared and you might have said, what the heck, like I did, or maybe something along those lines. I was like, well, it seems like QuickBooks has decided to do something a little different. Let's dig into it. And I wanna show you guys how to do your bank feed transactions now in this new user interface. So a little backstory, QuickBooks Online has decided to move. They were testing out a different user interface. They've decided to move forward with this different user interface. And then this video is recorded in 2025 and late 2025, August, 2025. And it sounds like they're gonna be moving all users by October, 2025 to this new user interface. Now, QuickBooks can always change their mind, um, but that has been the messaging that we've been receiving. So they are starting to push it out to different accounts. Yours might still look like the old version. You might be like, Hannah, what are you talking about? But you're going to get moved over. Everybody's going to be moved over to this new view. So I want you to know how to use it and so you're not scared. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. It's really not that different. It's just a little jarring when you first see it when you're used to always doing it a certain way. Okay, so I got you. Don't worry. If you're wondering who I am and why I care at all, uh, my name is Hannah Smolinski. I'm a CPA and a fractional CFO, and I like to teach things like this on the internet so that anybody can have access to it and you can learn how to use your accounting tools better. So this is Financial Tech Lab. This channel is all about helping you find the right tools and use the right tools and learn how to use the financial technology in order to improve your business. Um, so if that sounds good to you, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into QuickBooks Online and I'm gonna show you how to navigate to the new bank feeds because that's a little different. And then I'm gonna show you it's not so scary. All right, so here we are in a sample company and I have, we're gonna go, we're on the dashboard right now. And we're gonna go up here to the accounting app and then use the left hand navigation to go to bank transactions. I do have this bookmarked. I could have gone straight to the bookmark, but if you don't have it bookmarked yet, I wanted to show you how to find it. So go to bank transactions here, and then you can collapse this side because it's just taking up too much space. If you want to expand it again, you go here, but you can collapse it. Okay, so here we are in the bank transactions page. So this top part doesn't look that different from the old version. I'm gonna pull up the old version just so we can do a little bit of a comparison here. So this is the old version where it had the tiles for each account up here at the top. So I'm gonna take that away. That's very similar to this. We've got these tiles up here that shows the bank feeds. These are things that are directly connected to the bank. So um, we have our bank accounts directly connected and it's pulling in transactions constantly. It has this little indication down here on the bottom right hand corner of each tile. Like when's the last time it was refreshed? If we want to update everything, it will update live with those live connections. And then, you know, down below, like the, the structure is not that different. So down below we do have, it looks a little different with the gray and white, which is a little bit easier to see. But the main difference over here is now how um, we are taking action. So it's telling us to either match or categorize and then post where before, this is the other, the old view, we just uh, categorized or matched and then we added. Um, and it just is a little bit more of like a Excel spreadsheet type view, a little bit more than what the new version is. It looks a little more interactive. So going back to the new version here, we can, so it still tells us like what this is. So here's an expense from QuickBooks, $50 was spent. You can easily attach something directly here. When I click on this plus button, it'll open up your files. So if you have a folder that you keep all your receipts in, you can easily attach those. And then this is new, it's called requests. So you can actually um, make a note to either somebody on your team or to your client if you're a bookkeeper, or um, you can send it out to your bookkeeper if you are the client, where you can request more information. So um, um, this is a pretty cool thing um, and something I want to explore more on the channel here. This to from is going to be the customer or the vendor. Best practice for bookkeeping is always to use something here. This is going to give you 
better information for your reporting. Um, it's just going to give you a lot clearer information. So this is QuickBooks. Um, so I'm going to put in here, into it is the company. I'm just going to add that. Easily add a company name. So we're going to categorize that transaction. And then right now, this is a little toggle switch. Um, Match would want me to find something that it's related to, like a bill or an invoice. Um, but we're not doing that. This is just an expense that hit the American Express card. So we're just categorizing that expense and then posting. It is that simple. So um, here is a good example of this is a payment on the credit card. A payment was received. So um, we don't really need a do uh, from or to here. And then this, it's saying it's noticed that it paired up with a transaction from the main checking account because the American Express card is paid from the checking account. QuickBooks is smart enough to understand that like those two are gonna be related. They are the same amount. So it's already paired it. All you need to get do is categorize and post. Okay, so you just go through and do all of these things. Let me see if there's, um, I don't have anything to match because this is a sample file. I don't have an active bill or an active invoice to match things to. Um, but let's go ahead and show where those transactions went. So after you post them, they are then posted to the bank register. So that has now become a part of your accounting record where it wasn't there before. So here's that $50 um, charge to Intuit, and then um, this is that credit card payment here for um, 1130 So those were the two things that we had added into the bank transactions. A couple other things to note here on this view. It scared me a little bit when I first saw it. I was like, oh, I don't know if I like this, but the more I sit with it, the more I like it. Um, this little star icon is basically saying that they're using some kind of algorithm to determine what they think this um, transaction is. Now, I think it's really silly if they didn't, if they couldn't figure out what this transaction was because this is a recurring expense. So it's been in the system before, so it should be here. And this should be a good suggestion because it's had that data to be able to make this suggestion. But um, anytime you see this little icon is it's basically saying they've done a little bit of work and this is what they're suggesting. So um, you never want to just take QuickBooks suggestion without doing a human review. Um, we're not there yet. You know, we're not there to where we can just We'll sync up our bank accounts and step away and think that all of our accounting is done for us. We are not there yet. So you still need to put a human eye on this and go in and review and make sure you're happy with the transactions and how they've been categorized. I'm also going to resize this, which it's a little bit, it's a little bit hard to see the full account numbers without resizing. So um, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, categorization of software. I'm going to post that. I'm happy with the internet categorization. Um, Apple, that's also a software. Adobe, that's also a software. Office supplies with Amazon, that makes sense. Now you can connect your Amazon business account to um, QuickBooks Online, which is great because it will pull line by line transactions, which is good because, you know, when we buy things from Amazon, it might be some office supplies, it might be some snacks for the office, it might be um, some computer equipment or things like that. So, or furniture even, like it could be all sorts of things. You know, Amazon has everything. So it might hit multiple lines of your PL. So I'd highly recommend getting that Amazon business uh, set up if you do order a lot from Amazon. Um, so I feel fine with that categorization. Google is also a software and then QuickBooks is software. I'm just going to go ahead and run through these. These are actually things that just need to be excluded. You don't normally exclude things from your bank transactions, but those two things were just accidental transactions that got into the list as I was preparing the sample company. So 
I just wanted to show you guys how to take those out if you don't need them. Sometimes that will happen if like a duplicate transaction somehow has been made, um, but typically there's not a lot of things you need to exclude when you have your bank feeds properly set up. When you're doing a lot of manual posts and manual um, entries into your accounting system, you're more likely to have things that you might need to exclude from the bank feed. Um, and then let's just go ahead and get this one posted as well. So this now shows that everything from that has been pulled from the American Express has now been properly coded. And so it's up to date and it was up to date nine minutes ago. Um, so, you know, depending on how often you like to do your bookkeeping, you can go in here and keep these pretty refreshed based on the transaction volume you have in your business. Here's a list of transactions that have been posted. And when they're posted, that means they are on the register. So that's, you can go over here to the right hand side and look at that register at any point in time. This register will also tell you whether or not the transaction has been reconciled. It's an R if it's been reconciled, it's a C if it has like cleared. So it's tentatively reconciled. It means it's now part of the books. It's part of the accounting record, but it has not yet been reconciled to a source document like a bank statement or a credit card statement. So if you run your P&L, and you want to click on something, you will see these transactions that are a part of the register. The stuff that is in the bank feed is not yet part of the register. So um, you might run your P&L and say, oh, I'm missing some income. And then you might find, hey, it's actually sitting here in your checking account and it has not yet been categorized and added to the records. So if that's the case, then you know, hey, I just need to go in here and finish my bookkeeping first, and then my reporting will be correct. Over here, we'll show you anything that's excluded, and then you can link new accounts. So up here on the right-hand side, if you would like to connect a new account, maybe you've, you've opened up a new savings account with a different bank or something like that, you can click on that, and you can actually log in using a read-only technology to be able to connect your bank account to your QuickBooks account. So that is pretty great as well. And then I did mention that if you do make requests to either a team member or a client or a customer, you can click on these requests and you can manage them here. Another thing I wanna show you guys is when you click on one of these item. So I'm clicking on this T-Mobile transaction here. It gives you some options similar to what the, the old bank feeds did as well. So you can obviously change the account. We're going to go ahead and put the vendor in there to T-Mobile. And then you can write a memo. One thing that you can do, which we've always been able to do in QuickBooks Online, is to split a transaction. So for example, if this is cell phone and maybe like part of it is personal um, and then part of it is for the business, you could potentially split it out. Maybe it's split 50-50 between um, business expense and owner's distribution. And if that's the case, you can split and post there. That is the new bank feed. So remember, if you don't already have QuickBooks Online and you would like to check it out, go to financialtechlab.com slash QBO to get 30% off of the entire year of QuickBooks Online plus a 30-day free trial, which is really helpful. And then um, if you have any questions about the bank feeds or QuickBooks Online and this new interface, please put it in the comment section below. I will be reading all of those comments and responding. So um, if you found this video, helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. All right. Thanks. See you in the next video.